Do you need a loading screen with a spinner animation? How would you like to have a toggle you could turn on or off at any point in your application that would show or hide that animation on any of your screens? Let's do that now. What I want to do here is look for an animated graphic. All right, I think I'm going to go with this ellipsis. It's a nice, elegant spinner. And what I'm going to do is click on transparent to be on. And I'm going to give this, let me go with all A's. I'm going to save this as an animated. There we go. All right, so now we have our spinner. So we can get rid of that. Next thing I want to do is upload this spinner. Very good. We'll upload that. So we'll bring that over to a screen. And there we go. What I also like to have happen is I want a nice rectangle with a, a white color that will be a little transparent so you can see what's going on underneath the screen, but it's sort of uh, grayed out or whited out so they can't really get to it. And the whole purpose of the spinner is to allow the user to know that, hey, uh, the application's working, things aren't frozen, just give us a moment and we will complete the transaction. All right, so I want to add a rectangle. There we go. And let's go in here for the color and let's just make this. Actually, I think for the color, I'm going to go over here and click on the white. And then for the custom, I'm going to make this 85% for the alpha color. And then I'm going to make this take up the whole thing there. All right. And I'm going to make sure the image is on top. There we go. Sometimes with power apps, when you have this rectangle, it takes up the full screen. Sometimes you'll see some things coming out the edges. And so what I like to do is give it a border of two or four. Uh, two might be good enough, but so for the border color, what I want to do is I want to reference self.fill. There we go. And let's let's name our, our uh, controls here. So we'll say image spinner. And for the rectangle, now we won't say rec because rec a lot of times is used for records. So I'm going to say ret for rectangle. And I'm going to say spinner. Okay. So we want to make sure the position of the rectangle is zero, zero for the width. I don't know if you move this from screen to screen. I just feel better if this is dynamic. So I'm going to say parent dot width. And for the height, I'm going to say parent dot height. Very good. All right. So for this spinner here, for the X, you can center an X of a control. If you take the parent dot width, you divide it by two, and then you subtract the control we're talking about in this case is self dot width. We'll divide that by two. It should be perfectly centered uh, horizontally. Now we need to do the same thing with the Y. So we're going to say parent dot Y divided by two. Subtract self dot Y. I'm sorry, not Y. This needs to be height. And then self dot height. Divided by two, there we go. So now it's perfectly in the center. Now we have these two controls named properly. Let's create a group out of this. And the group, we're gonna call, we're gonna name this Thinner Group. Very good. So let's create a copy of this screen. And this duplicate, I'm just gonna call this home home screen. Very good. And I'm going to move home up to the top. And this screen right here, which is the original screen, let's call this spinner screen. Now, what I do with screens that the user is never intended to see, it's just meant for something I can go back to and copy things from, I'll put an all uppercase like that so it sort of stands out. So if we ever need this spinner for any other screen, we could just go to the spinner screen, click on that group. Okay, let's let's say um, let's add a new screen here. Okay, a new screen has nothing in it, so we want to add a spinner to that. You could just go to that spinner screen, and you could just copy it and then paste it over there. But we're not quite done yet. So what we need to do is we want this spinner to either appear or disappear based on a global variable that will be of type boolean, which means it's either true, false, yes or no. 
and it's something that can be set. Let's say you're about to do a database transaction. You set that variable to your database operation. Once you're done, you set that, that variable Boolean value to false, and then that would make this so that would make the spinner appear. Database transaction after it's done, make the spinner the animation disappear. Let's create a variable. Let's go up here to the app on start, and we don't have any code up here. Look at that; it's nice and fresh. Let's create a new variable with the set function. This will create global variables. The scope of it is global throughout the whole application. So we'll call it GBL. It's a recommended practice to call your, your global variables prefix with GBL. GBL show spinner. And we're going to say true. Now I'm going to copy and paste that down below. And we'll say false there. Okay. So a lot of times in uh, your app on start, you're going to have a bunch of code. Perhaps you're going to go to the database and initialize a lot of things. So you got a lot of things going on in, in on start. It might take one to three to five, maybe even 10 seconds to load up. So you want to show that spinner, whatever screen they're on, you want that spinner to show up. We'll initialize that there. And then all of our code in the app on, on start will be between those two. Okay. Let's double click on that variable there. And we're here on the spinner screen. Let's click on this whole group and we'll go to the visible and we'll paste it right there. So visible for this group, there we go. So I got the cart before, before the horse a little bit in that. So I've got the spin over here on home screen. I want to go ahead and delete that. Very good. You want to set up the spinner on one screen and get it just how you like it. And then you copy from there. Let's add a button. And this button is going to be on top of the spinner. And we're going to say toggle spinner. There we go. Make it a little wider there. And let's make sure that is centered there. All right. So what we want to do here on the select is we're going to do the set on that global. And we're going to reverse whatever value is in it. Okay. So I'm going to hold down Alt. I'll click on it. There we go. There's our spinner. And then we'll stop it. Okay. So now that we've done that, I think this is all set up the way that we want it. What we could do, just looking at this, for both the image and the rectangle is we can go into tooltip and if they hover over that, we'll say application working. So if they hover over that, they'll get a little bit of an explanation there. So now we're ready to copy that and we'll put it over here on the home screen. Before we paste on the home screen, let's let's do a few things here. Let's just put, put a few things over here. We have an image control. Let's put um, a text box and let's put label let's put a drop down let's put a bunch of stuff in here there we go all right so now we're going to paste on top of that the spinner group there we go and you wouldn't normally notice anything's on there right well if we go over the spinner screen and we hold on alt we, we start that we go back to the home screen look at that so if you set up the spinner on each of your screens if something kicks off that spinner and sets it to true to show it uh, doesn't even matter if something sort of makes you go from uh, one screen to another screen it's going to stay in place until something actually turns it off so that's nice so something else I would do is whenever you have a new screen to create what I would recommend doing is creating a new screen I'll call it new screen all uppercase because no user will be using this new screen is simply as a function for me as the developer, just to make a copy of it when I want to create a new screen. And as I move forward with the application, if there's anything new I want to do, I'm going to have it all added here to this new screen. For example, I'm going to want that spinner in there. So I'm going to copy, paste that over there. Now the spinner screen just has a spinner and it, allow, and it has a button there to allow me to test it out. And that is its sole purpose. And then the new screen will have other things besides the spinner that I might want to have on all my screens that I create thereafter. Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Darren has the solution. Discover how you can condense six months of power-up struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power Apps Deep Dive Masterclass.